Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Hyperion Hub, your meeting place for all things Disney. Now your hosts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hyperion Hub. I'm John Alois, and I'm joined by Sean Dagenhart. Hi there. And John Redling Schaefer. Hello, hello. Oh, thank you guys for joining us. We're so happy you can. <laughs> uh, we like to start every show off with our Disney views. And this week, you know, I was thinking about the entire history of, of the Disney company. They had so many things and so many great ideas that they either didn't uh, fulfill or they um, put off and used in other areas. And one of those things that I'm speaking about in particular is Disney attractions and theme parks. You know, Walt's first theme park was going to be Mickey Mouse Park across the street from the Disney studio. Um, some of the things that they tried to or, or put efforts into creating and building, uh, one was Westcott. That was going to be Epcot out west, and I think that Spaceship Earth would have been larger than both the theme parks out there that are there out there now combined. I'm being facetious, but it would have been huge. Do you guys ever look into some of those historic things that weren't created by the Disney company? Yeah, and actually, I've focused over the years on such things as Westcott, kind of the parks that never were. Uh, in, in past episodes, I know we've touched upon these. Uh, for example, Disney's America, outside of D.C., over by Bull Run, uh, that ran into some opposition by the public. I think Walt was actually looking to do a ski lodge. Um, I don't remember the exact location, maybe Northern California or, uh, or Tahoe. Then also, us Midwesterners, something we talked about with Michael Bowling was the idea of a gathering place from whether Main Street USA or whatever Walt had in mind for a building slash park in St. Louis. Uh, unfortunately, that never came to be after some discussions with the Bush family trying to influence what could or could not be served at Walt's uh, uh, idea of a park in the Midwest. Uh, I'll let you figure out what refreshing beverage that is, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that really sounded impressive and exciting to me was the Western River Expedition. And this was going to be in uh, Frontierland in the Magic Kingdom. And essentially, it was um, going to house, I think, several attractions. But one of them was an indoor pirates type of traction, attraction with cowboys and the Great Western Expedition. Uh, they were also going to have a themed roller coaster, which eventually became Big Thunder Mountain. But we should do a deep dive into this one sometime. This was a very impressive uh, attraction or area inside of Frontierland. And the reason why they didn't build it is because when the Magic Kingdom opened in 1971, people were very upset that Pirates of the Caribbean wasn't part of the, the theme park. And the reason why was Walt thought since they were so close to the Caribbean there, people wouldn't be as interested. So they would have a, a mm -hmm. Western style uh, themed attraction in on the East Coast. And I think they still had plans to build it, but it just never came to fruition. And if you're looking for kind of... Uh an illustration of some of these, I'll tell you what, the Imagineers miniseries on Disney Plus really does a fantastic job, especially the episode when they were trying to figure out what to put across from Disneyland. All the Westcott renderings that you talked about, John, and some of the other ideas, um, uh, actually throughout that whole miniseries of all the parks it is absolutely fascinating and well done. And as you study Disney history, you see that, you know, no idea really goes away. They eventually think about it and possibly use it later. That's what I love about uh, the Disney Corporation and their Imagineers. They, they hold on to those ideas and they really help it nurture and it becomes something even greater than what the original idea was to begin with. So that's our Disney views. And now we're moving on to our main topic. Friends, I'm going to hijack today's show. I hope you don't mind. Let's go for a stroll. We're walking past Spaceship Earth as we get into Epcot because everybody knows you don't go to Spaceship Earth right away because everybody goes there and the line gets too long. We're going to keep going. We're heading our way to the World Showcase, all right? Now, I don't know if you guys want to stop at Port of Entry and get a little trinket before we start walking around to the countries, but I got a question for you. 
This is very controversial. John, Sean, one at a time, are you going to turn left or are you going to turn right? What if we come in at the uh, International <laughs> Gateway? You're really going to start with that? Are you really going to start with that? All right. Let's back it up. For those of you not staying at Boardwalk, Yacht Club, or Beach Club, clever. We'll get to the International Gateway. Uh, I'm coming in past the, the main entrance. You going left, you going right. We actually, I think we're about six of one, half dozen of the other. We've tried both, depending on maybe where our fast passes are or what we want to hit first, but we don't have a preferred method well if, you're wrong all right john what's yours <laughs> if we don't have scheduled passes fast passes or you know dining reservations i have to say i think we prefer to go clockwise so i like to start at mexico well you're both wrong so anyway <laughs> let's take a stroll we're gonna go the correct way to the right and all i'm gonna ask you guys i i, I miss the world showcase i miss what fun it is to literally stroll around the world. I'm not talking about those groups that like to do the drink around the world with their shirts and autograph. They got a beer here and a spritzer there. No, this is family fun. I want to talk about one or two things that you may or may not hit or skip completely as we go around the World Showcase the correct direction. Okay? Now, I, John, you're going to have to do this backwards. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, is anything that sticks out? I've always enjoyed the, mu the musical groups that perform at Canada. Anything you guys like? Food, uh, entertainment, shopping-wise, when you hit Canada? I love the film, the 360 vision. That's just, that's beautiful. I haven't seen the new version. I haven't either. With uh, Eugene Levy and uh, Catherine O'Hara, I believe, now. But yes, I do love the film. I love that pathway to get back there. You walk through that beautiful rock work and uh, the waterfall. But we love Le Cellier. We've always loved Le Cellier. I've been there several times, and it's a great steakhouse. We have not been able to eat there yet. I wanna, we want to definitely want to try that. All right. Well, so far you're passing. That's good. Let's move on. Hold on. I, I do miss off kilter. I loved yes. off kilter. Yes. yes. That is a that is definitely a loss in that area. Well, and and I think again, hopefully in future years we're visiting when all of the artists are performing throughout the world showcase and quite frankly throughout all the parks. So um, a very good point. Although they were gone before this hit, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They were gone several years ago, and yeah. that was a yeah. loss. All right, so we head on um, to the main country in that commonwealth, to the United Kingdom. Now, certainly um, your favorite shops, uh, if you prefer things uh, British. Um, you know, personally, I can't just go past the Rose and Crown pub without either drooling, whether it be for the scotch egg or, or a nice pint. Uh, what do you guys like to do when you're strolling in Britain? We love Rose and Crown. Um, I, I love England. So just we enjoy mostly wandering around and walking down the streets and seeing some of the little Peter Pan, Mary Poppins, Alice, some of those references. The Imagineers did a great job uh, kind of replicating what they were able to accomplish where they started those little pathways at New Orleans Square and Disneyland. Um, you really can kind of just wander through buildings and areas like that uh, inside the United Kingdom Pavilion. And I, in all honesty, I love in each uh, pavilion to talk to the cast members who are from those areas. And I usually find one or two topics and I'll, I'll, you know, just have a little conversation with them and I'll talk about uh, sports m many times or English music like the Beatles or things like that. So England is one of my favorite places. Usually we're wrapped around that area by the end of the day and we spend a lot of time in that in that location when we go the opposite way of what you like to do yes the incorrect way yes i got it <laughs> the girls like the phone booth as well yeah i love getting their picture with the phone booth yeah and actually that was what agent p's adventure that used to be a spy game that you could play one of the mm. uh, stops was uh, actually the phone booth something came out it was actually fun to do with uh, my older kids uh, one time and before that it was kim possible yep right right 
okay, fine, well, now we're going to at least acknowledge Sean's first point about the International Gateway as we either decide to head back to Stormalong Bay at, uh, <laughs> at the resort and go swimming uh, or shop at the International well, I'll, Gateway. I'll tell you, yeah, so this was this last trip that just Ann and I took, uh, we re- came in on the Skyliner. Yeah. And it was the first time we have ever come in that way, and it was so weird because I'm a guy that likes tradition. I like walking through the entrance. I like seeing, you know, the curtain lift on the park as you're supposed to see it. So while it was very convenient and we didn't have to deal with the crowds, it really was a weird start to the day. <laughs> it, but it's the way to get in without a line sometimes. That's true. You definitely. All right. So I'm going to be short. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of taking the lead as we get to our countries, but... I, I will be harangued and um, left for the vultures if I do not purchase ice cream uh, when I go to France. Now, maybe you don't have that problem, but if I don't get, uh, especially the macarons with the ice cream in the middle, uh, the what? I am not being a good father. Macaron, come oh, on. Oh, yes. Very nice. I talked to a cast member who taught me how to say it, um, and I minored in French. That's how bad it is, so <laughs> don't judge me. It's been a long time. But I, ice cream is the way for me and when I go to France. I will say that we probably spend the least amount of time in France. Um, you know, we've tried to eat in Monsieur Paul. We have not been able to get up there. Uh, we take a few pictures in front of the Eiffel Tower. We see if Marie is around from the Aristocats. But we, re- oh, you know what? I do like walking through those shops as well, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and there have been a like a three piece band through there at times, and we might get street performers. Yeah, yeah, we might get a glass of wine and, and sit there and watch. But typically, we don't really spend too much time there because we've never eaten there. I don't believe our big memory of France um, was the very first trip we took with the girls back in 2012, walking through World Showcase, and it started pouring. And we were newbies. We did not have our, you know, ponchos or anything like that. So we ended up at one of the jewelry shops with about 10,000 other people with our, you know, two for stroller and just kind of stood there. You know, in this day and age of pandemic, you know, I would have much preferred the rain. But at the time, you know, that was our place where we hung out for about 20 minutes. But looking forward to the Ratatouille ride opening up, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they've actually um, uh, redid parts of their video um, that they've, or their, their 360. It incorporates Bell uh, a little bit more um, and, and involves, I think, maybe even a sing along. They have two films. They still have Impressions to France, but then Do they? they have. Okay, I didn't know that. They have two films there. They have Impressions to France and they have the. Um, Beauty and the Beast sing along. I, I do enjoy Impressions to France. Now, that film is from like 1982. It does need it's to rough. be re- reworked. You can also wander through those shops and kind of get nauseous from all the perfume as well. So, so maybe that's another reason why we rush out. <laughs> all right. Here. Well, um, I guess the best summary here is that John doesn't like France. All right. Great. All right. One, one other neat. One other neat France story. Um, when we were there this past January, Paige O'Hara was there signing her artwork. And, you know, we stood in line, got to meet Paige and about three people ahead of us in line, Belle came out. And so the person that was getting their picture taken got their picture with Paige O'Hara and with Belle. Wow. And I wish she would have hung out and stayed around so we could have done that. But that was that was really neat. That's cool. All right. Well, this is this is good. We're learning. And and see, John, you can enjoy the world showcase this direction. Let's keep going. All right. Now we hit Morocco. The country that was funded by the country, the king of Morocco himself, uh, brought all of his craftsmen in. Personally, um, I've, I've enjoyed walking through the bazaar and the shops. Uh, our daughters wanted to meet Jasmine there. Uh, but I see Morocco a very picturesque. You know, some people prefer certain countries for photo opportunities. I think the tile work is fantastic in Morocco. It is beautiful. Uh, yeah, we love just walking around the bazaar. Uh, My favorite memory is my first trip to Disney World in 1993, senior in high school. And, you know, a bunch of high school seniors turned loose on Disney and walking through Morocco when we found the Fountain of Fertility. And we just cracked up at that. We've got a picture, you know, of a big group of us standing in front of the Fountain of Fertility. So that's my one big Morocco memory. (laughs) Don't, Don't Google that at home, kids. That's right. Yeah. 
I love the bizarre. It reminds me of a couple of scenes from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I always kind of imagine mm-hmm, myself, mm-hmm. you know, as uh, Illinois, Illinois Jones. Illinois Jones, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Illinois Jones. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> is he gonna? Is that gonna? Is it, is that gonna be our Easter egg? Illinois Jones is gonna be in every episode now. <laughs> We, we switched gears by going to the opposite end of the world in Japan. Uh, guys, any memories of Japan? This is my favorite pavilion. I Seriously? love, really? yep, yeah. I love, I, I really am fascinated with the Japanese culture. Um, there's one building that you can walk in where they have, uh, it's kind of dedicated to uh, old toys or it changes out regularly, but you know, they, I'm a big Transformers fan, and I love the uh, history of their country. They have such a fascinating past from the samurais and and uh, all their artwork, and um, they really truly appreciate um, just fantasy, you know. And uh, I'm a big Hayao Miyazaki fan, so they have a bunch of things dedicated to his films, and I could spend all day in their department store there. I love Teppanito. We've eaten there. Everybody's so friendly and interesting and and wants to talk about their uh, their homeland. It's my favorite pavilion. I, I the the dancers, the um the drum players out front. Um I could be there for hours. We have spent hours there. Well, and what family doesn't have a picture of them with the decorative gate with Spaceship Earth uh, framed perfectly in it, right? Uh Uh-huh. All right, well, let's get patriotic. Go next door to the American adventure. All right. Well, my kids enjoy cheeseburgers, right? But there's a little bit more in the American adventure, both in the building and across the way. Sean, I bet you have a favorite thing that uh, maybe get... Gets uh, gets your eyes watery when you hear the right sounds underneath the American Adventure. We love the American Adventure, and it breaks my heart that the Voices of Liberty are n- not singing currently. Um, they are just outstanding. Um, can sit in that pavilion all day long and listen to them sing. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I've got some friends, um, acquaintances that sing with Voices, so I know it's been painful for them uh, the past you know few weeks. Uh, but looking forward to the day when they will return and hit those notes again. It's going to be a glorious day when that happens. Yeah, one of my favorite memories. Uh, our older, our oldest son um, is not is not very sociable at times and 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 very 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 guarded. And a very sweet member of the Voices of Liberty brought him up hmm. and had him perform in his mind. Had him perform with them, and by the end. He was just beaming from ear to ear, and not only is their their musicianship just amazing, but that's a memory for him that he will never forget. And the acoustics in that hall are amazing. Yeah, yeah. when they hit those high notes, it's yeah. uh, it definitely brings a tear to the eye. The American Adventure is my favorite show on property. Really? Absolutely. Uh, you know, even when we can't be there every Thanksgiving, it's like a tradition to watch it on line or listen to it as we're driving to families, places. So American Adventure, uh, I love the fact that they tackle difficult moments in American history and it makes you feel proud by the time you're done. And the song Golden Dream is one of the greatest songs disney's ever created in my opinion it is yeah and the insertion of american history sound bites uh with john f kennedy and martin luther king and the touchdown of the eagle brilliant it's absolutely phenomenal i hope they if they ever change it i hope they only improve it well you know there's so much to see and do in the world showcase that we're going to split this topic up into two episodes so next week We'll hear about the other half of the World Showcase. Before we go, you know I'm going to ask for you to go out to Apple Podcasts and rate and review us so more people find the show. Mark Backus did that recently, and it really helps. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. We're glad you could join us. We'd love to hear from you. You can email or send us a recorded audio message at podcast at the Hyperion Hub.com. Find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
The Hyperion Hub is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its subsidiaries. We'll meet you next time at the Hyperion Hub. Thank you.